But it certainly did feel that this show was going to do better than last week's show. So if you did a big show last week and you feel like you generated a lot of interest and you're going to be doing a huge show this week, then fine, I can give one more week of throwing like a whole bunch of stuff at the wall. But there's way too much stuff going on. Now, saw some people on the board because we discussed this last night. I forget the exact term, but it was something like, Brian, we're young. We watch these movies and play these video games. We can remember all of these details. You don't get it. It's not about remembering everything. I realize I said that without notes, I wouldn't remember everything on the show. I probably, without notes, could remember most everything that did happen on the show. But that's beside, it's not about remembering. It's about what happens when you start doing this. Regardless of whether it's good or bad, what happens is now you're moving into the crash TV era of of AEW, if this continues, okay? Now, crash TV in the short term, it's exciting. People get into everything. You talk about it with your friends. I've seen this happen before. Yes, in the short term, you do this crash TV, and it's going to boost things up a little bit. But it doesn't matter if... You're a young kid that plays video games or you watch movies or whatever you're, the guy said on the board last night because he could he liked the show the way it was. It's going to burn out the viewers. It's happened every time in wrestling history. If you do crash TV, there will be a subsequent crash. That's not good for anybody. So every now and then, you're expecting a big audience. You throw a whole bunch of things at the wall. You get people interested in a bunch of different storylines and where things are going, and then you dial it back a little bit. And then, obviously, they're going to have some big shows coming up in in early 2021. Do a bunch of stuff on those shows and then dial it back a little. But what they've done the last two weeks, I'm telling you, it will be unsustainable to continue doing shows like that every single week on television. Some people are going to disagree, but I'm old. I've lived through it. I've seen it before, all over the world. You can't stay at this level. Like I said, I enjoyed the show. I'm not worried about it yet. It's been two weeks. I see the reason for doing it for two weeks, but there is no reason to do it next week or the week after. Now we must slow down, and we should tell some of these stories. What did you think of these shows, Mike? I, I thought I agree with you on AEW. Um, there was too much, but the one thing at least that they have going for them in my mind is I believe that they have a path for everything that they throw against the wall and what they're doing. They have a plan. You know, you see that, you know, everything leads to a match next week, but I agree. And when you throw that stuff, much, much stuff at the wall, it, you start losing maximum impact. And over time, that's what burns people out. Like you said, it's not about what you remember. And it's not even about the angle. I mean, obviously, Shaq should be a should have been a big point uh, of last night's show. Sting should have been. Uh, the, there were there were things that should have. But some of the stuff with the women didn't necessarily need to take place. Uh, it, you know, there was a run in after everything. There was a run in or a fight or something after I'm pretty every sure it's been match. two weeks straight that every single solitary yeah. match has had interference or a run in or an angle afterwards every single one and by doing that it lessens the effect so uh, you know unlike WWE I don't have a fear that all of this stuff is going to happen and then half of it's just going to be ignored next week I, I really believe that they you know they have a plan for everything that they're doing it's just it's a little bit too much and i know some the brandy shack thing <laughs> brandy's oh, acting i'll talk about brandy, that in a minute. brandy being involved in all that sort of stuff you know look that was something that they had to have put on the show last night and that i think we talked about that the shack deal is one of those things that when you get a chance to do it you do it tnt all that sort of stuff um I guess we can go. I mean, it all depends on what you, you know, where you want to go from here. As far as the NXT show, since you said, what'd you think about both shows? The NXT show, it was fine. It was very antiseptic. It was very by the numbers and it was not insulting too much in, in, in any way. It was just 
not very exciting. And I'd like to see Timothy Thatcher and, and Cameron Grimes. I don't know if I like the way they got there, but you know what? If I, if anything comes out of last night as a positive, I'm going to go ahead and take that one. For a lot of other people, Karrion Cross and Damian Priest are probably going to be a pretty big thing. And to, to be honest, those two guys beating on each other, you know, it's like Wardlow and, and Jake Hager down the line, except we can do it right now with Damian Priest and Karrion Cross. It's going to be really nice to see. A little shaky where they're going with Austin Theory with his new schlepping behind Johnny act. Or is by the way, is their crew called the Way? Yes, that was a horrible '90s song, wasn't it? I got to talk about Brandy. So last night when I reviewed this show with Dave, okay, I'm all done. Why don't you talk about Brandy? Well, we you were you were going through everything. We got plenty to talk about today, but you mentioned Brandy, and everyone in the chat's been talking about Brandy for 20 minutes. So listen. And then you can give your thoughts. Yesterday, I was reviewing this Brandy segment, and I mentioned that Brandy, for some reason, is a heel again. Because I watched the segment, and when it was over, I was like, last time I saw her, she was a babyface. Why is she a heel now? So I start the review. I tell Dave that Brandy is a heel again. I then recap the segment, and I realize, wait a second. She was... Mostly a baby face in this segment. She was mad that Jade broke her arm. Shaq was being a jerk. Shaq told her she could learn something from Jade. And she got upset and she threw water on him. So she actually was a baby face. But the problem is the segment started with Tony Schiavone saying we're joined by Brandy and Shaq. And... Shaq, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. And she flipped out. How dare you talk to Shaq before me? Mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, it's Shaq. Or as I like to call him, the Shaq. I mean, no 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 one is disrespecting you by starting with Shaq. Like, you're going to get your turn. So she started this segment doing something that was so baffling to me that I figured she had to be a heel. But then the rest of the segment, she was a baby face. So we got to figure out this Brandy thing. I think she is a baby face still, but what was that start of that segment? Dude, I don't. we don't have to do a damn thing. They're the ones who need to make Brandy a consistent character doing something. I mean, it's she's... I said we because we're on the payroll, Mike. We're, we're, oh, <laughs> you, you, you may be. As I you can tell trickle, by this first segment here. I got to deal with Reaganomics, trickle down economics with you, and hopefully it gets to me, and I hope... That at some point we get a consistent Brandy character. She just seems to be, no matter the situation, she just, poof, turns into something else. And that was the whole thing with, the whole thing is to get sympathy on her for breaking her arm and Jade coming out out of nowhere and and challenging Cody on behalf of Shaq and all this stuff. It's like, let her, let Shaq explain why. And you're actually on the good side in this. Why jump on Tony? Why be, you know, why present yourself in that way? To be pissed at Shaq? Absolutely. But I just, she just, again, there's no week after week after week. There is nothing consistent about Brandy, unfortunately. It just all, she's like Jello. You just put her in the situation and she just kind of wobbles around. Oh, yeah, she's good with every meal. It's like, uh, I don't know about that because what I saw last night, again, it was just corny. Back in a moment, everybody. Observer Live. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.